why would you want to put all your panels in series rather than parallel? Well, those are the two options. If you put them in series, you'll get a higher voltage, which means that on poor conditions, you're more likely to get some power out of the array. An array is just when you've got more than one panel wired together. The downside to that is if one of those panels gets shaded or partially shaded, it's going to affect the whole show. All those panels will then have a break in continuity and struggle to give you very much. If you go the other way and wire your panels in parallel, you'll keep the voltage lower and you're likely to deliver a higher current. That's how you'll get the same power. We're back to Ohm's law here. Um, again, which might mean you want to think about thicker cable if you go for a lot of panels in parallel. And another little thing about doing that, you have to buy little connector adapters to split the wires so that you can, you know, have four wires going into two wires. Whereas if you do them in series, you just daisy chain them. So, you know, slightly, slightly simpler, but not significantly different. Now, the advantage of going for uh, parallel is you won't have any problems with shading. If one of your parallel panels gets into the shade, the others will still work perfectly fine. So what do you do? Do you have all your panels forming one massive array going into one humongous controller? Or do you put all your panels into separate arrays and controllers? Or do you do a bit of both? Again, it's going to depend partly on the physicality of your layout on your roof. You might see, oh, I've got two panels that just happen to fit here next to each other really nicely. Um, they're, you know, 250 watts each. They're big panels. I think I'll do them in series together because that's nice and easy. Run a pair of cables back and buy a suitable controller. And then you might be a bit further down your boat and you go, oh, I can't fit the same ones on, but I can get three smaller ones. And you might think, right, I'll do those three in a little series array and bring two cables all the way down, put them into another controller. And you might even have room for another couple of panels right down the end. Depends how big your boat is. So you're going to be governed by that to a certain extent. I wouldn't say set out to wire the whole damn lot together into one mega array. You know, come out with about 1,000 volts DC at the end and need some kind of controller that probably doesn't even exist. And I wouldn't say go to the trouble of wiring every single panel separately on its own wires, separately to its own controller, you know, completely pointless. You don't, you don't have to wire panels to separate controllers even if you're doing them in parallel you just put all the wires in together and it's all fine um, so on mine I've got two arrays so that means I've got two controllers and I've got six panels so four panels form one array and two panels form another I did it like that because of the controllers I had the space I've got and the panels I was able to get hold of it just you know I did the math and it worked out so that's how I've I've done it. My four panels are actually two in series in parallel with another two in series, if that makes any sense. Now, when you start mixing panels, it's good if you use identical panels or near identical panels, obviously, because you want them to be working at the same point of efficiency at the same time. If you've got different panels producing a slightly different voltage that are hardwired together, it's never going to be as efficient. The MPPT controller is never going to be able to make quite as much sense of what's going on as if everything's the same and working, you know, together. Um, so my two pairs of panels, I've got a pair that's a pair and a pair that's another pair, and those panels aren't identical. One of them's a monocrystalline pair and one of them's a polycrystalline pair. But the voltages that they produce in the specification sheets I've got, very, very similar voltage. Don't really think it's going to cause any problems. So they're all joined up together. And then down at the end of the boat, I've got um, two large panels. Now, panel sizes. OK, as I said earlier, panels come in all sorts of sizes and you're going to have to get whatever's going to maximise the usability of the space that you've got. Now, I had a look at mine just now and two common sizes. There's rectangular and sort of wide rectangular, if you like. And 
the large ones are six squares of solar panels um, by 10. So you've got 60 solar panel squares contained within the, the one panel. And that's 167 centimetres by 100 centimetres. And that takes up most of the width of the roof of the boat. Now, the good thing about my boat is I've got handrails on the sides of the roof as opposed to just that kind of ridge that squared off ridge that a lot of boats have and I love those handrails they've saved me on a few occasions because you can really grab hold of those when you want to and luckily those panels stopped well short of those uh, rails those handrails and I can get my hands onto them you know, you know without being obstructed at all by the panels that's a compromise that I wouldn't want to make I wouldn't want to lose the usability of my handrails no way you could if you wanted to use the handrails actually as a mounting for your panels i've seen people do that slap the panels on the handrails you know fix them on with some kind of tie on brackets or what have you and that's a good way of mounting the panels as long as you remember to support them in the middle a bit i think but um to lose your handrails um that would be a safety step too far for me so i'm okay with the bigger ones anyway and the other ones i've got are i'm just looking here 148 centimeters by 67 centimeters that's the narrow ones that you can still walk either side of if you want to but i found it not to be worth it so obviously there are all kinds of other little funny sizes i mean if you've got an odd space you might want to stick an extra little i don't know a little square one in or something whatever it's up to you Now I did mention having more than one controller. Now is there a problem with that? Apparently no. I looked at this and you can connect one controller to the batteries and you can get the other controller and just connect that to the batteries as well. They don't interfere with each other. They don't get upset when one's putting out one voltage and one's putting out another voltage. They seem to work okay and they don't cause a problem. And you're quite likely to have a situation where half the boat's in shade and half isn't. Um, again, another good reason for not daisy chaining all of your panels into one array. Um, so there's quite quite often a situation where they're you know one's working better and it's decided it's time to put 14.4 volts out into the batteries and the other one's sitting there thinking, well, I'm not doing much. I'm only going to put 12.4 volts out, or whatever it is. Um, they seem to manage fine. Now I've only got lead acid batteries and I'm guessing that things are going to be pretty simple whether you've got gel or AGM and probably not too much different even if you've got traction batteries. They're all old technology batteries and although they do all have voltages that they like to see I think it's fair to say there's a little bit of leeway in uh, old batteries. If you go for lithium you're going to need to be a lot more careful. You're going to need to make sure that your charging voltages are exactly what your battery manufacturer specifies. Now, some controllers have a setting for lithium. Some controllers you can freestyle and put your own parameters in. So that would be something you'd have to look at. I won't go into lithium batteries today other than to say that I wonder how much more efficiently they would charge than lead acid batteries and whether they would be so good at charging that you might not need anywhere near as much of a solar array. Something for another topic. Okay, so what are the pros and cons of solar? Well, that's pretty easy. There's lots of pros to solar. I've written a few down here. They're silent. They're free power once they're installed. They're relatively cheap. They're easy to install, especially if you do it the way I've told you to. And they're very, very low maintenance. You just need to keep the panels clean, you know, give them a wipe down once a week if you're somewhere where it gets a little bit dusty. And um, just, you know, check your connections once in a while. But um, I've had no trouble at all with them. Good as gold, really. Um, and the other thing is, apart from being silent and not causing any pollution, they work when you're not there. So if I'm here and I run out of power, I can start my engine or I can get my generator out if, if I haven't got solar panels or if it's a bad day. But if I'm away, if I've gone to visit a friend and I've got a fridge full of stuff, I'm going to be thinking to myself, you know, what am I going to do when my 
batteries run out all my fridge full of stuff's going to go off so then that leads you to thinking well if i know i'm going away i've now not got to buy any food and i've got to start thinking about running the food down that's in the fridge and then turning the fridge off when i go when i come back to the boat with bags full of shopping that want to be refrigerated or frozen um, i've then got a lag time in the fridge getting down to the right temperature but if i go away now and i've got solar the fridge will be running when i get back it'll be running no problem um, depths of winter are more likely to probably turn off the fridge if I go away to be honest although if you were lucky you'd probably be okay but for three quarters of the year not a problem at all you can go away you can leave all your food in your fridge and you know it's going to be just fine when you get back and when you come back into the boat your charge meter or whatever you've got um, on your you know in your control panel back there that's going to say batteries at a hundred percent and that's nice to see when you arrive and you're tired and cold and fed up or hot and fed up what have you right i think i've nearly covered it all now um fuses and isolators you need to put either a fuse or an isolator switch something like that in between the panels and the solar controllers or possibly in between the solar controller and the batteries uh, just depends what you've wired to what angle of incidence I did touch on this when I talked about the mounting brackets um, I have found through experiment that you can get about twice as much efficiency from a panel if you angle it right at the Sun compared to when it's lying flat I think that having to bother angling the panels is a lot of hassle. It's an extra job to do every time you arrive where you've arrived or possibly at various times of the day because you might be angling them and making things worse for certain times of the day. So my solution to that is don't bother angling them, just get more of them. Have twice as many working half as efficiently, then you don't have to muck around. Uh, who would benefit from solar panels? Just about everybody, unless you're in a marina all winter long and you cruise nearly every day all summer long, um, you're going to benefit from them. Right, well, that was a long chat and congratulations if you stayed with me. But I think it's just one of those things, it's jam-packed with information. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go out and have a look at what I've got on the roof and we'll have a look at the controller at the back there and you know all that sort of thing break it up a bit okay well the first array of solar panels is made up of these four these are my monocrystalline ones I don't know if you can see from the camera but they're a little bit blacker the panels are almost black and the connections between them are very nicely defined and they're really a very good quality of panel the ones down there um, they've got a bluey sort of hue to them and the foils look slightly less carefully made um, and they were a little bit cheaper and they're a little bit larger the reason I got these ones um, was because I've got a chimney just there and I couldn't have anything that was any wider here we can have a look how I've done my brackets they're just bog standard brackets screws or in that case that we're looking at there they're the ones that are made to be tiltable that I never bo never bother tilting so those are bolts and uh, just stuck down brackets this is the first pair that I ever fixed on and uh, I thought I needed special brackets so I bought special brackets and to be fair those brackets look pretty neat um, but they don't do anything that the other brackets don't do and again you can see they're just stuck on with silicon it's a neat job and it's lasted well it's a devilishly cold day today out here so that's enough of that let's go back inside and have a look at the controllers Okay, so there are the controllers. They're mounted in my sort of electrical cupboard. I've got the uh, consumer unit above and coming back down, you can just about see, I've put some fuses in line and that power 
then just disappears off down there to where the inverter goes and it all joins into the batteries and it's as simple as that really just one more little thing to say about these controllers if you can see apart from the fact that one's a bit meatier than the other one's got blue buttons on it and one's got orange buttons on it now the orange button one is the older version of these controllers and what they used to do is they used to have a thing called um, common positive so the positive was the rail that went through and the regulating was done on the negative and I think the newer ones they've changed that to common negative um, the only difference that makes to me is that for some reason the older ones the common positive can handle a lot more excess current remember I spoke before about um, being able to take more current in than they could give out and that being a useful thing well they can all that do that to a certain extent but those old orange button ones they can take in a lot more current they've got really good headroom on them and uh, the blue button ones not quite so much or not so much nearly but that doesn't have to matter you know you just buy what you need and away you go now I think we can actually see the display on these so let's have a little look you've seen what it was like outside what have we got coming in well my four panel array is at uh, 62 volts actually that might be no it's my two panel array and it's 72 volts now look that's fluctuating a bit and I'm getting nothing on the PV and 2.2 amps it's a little bit up and down today isn't it with this uh, conditions that we've got but I'm basically getting a couple of amps coming in off that one now over here this one lights up and I think that means you're not going to be able to see it as well I certainly can't but I'll tell you what it says 32 volts on the PVs which is on the panel end of things with an amp and to the batteries 13.7 volts with 2.4 amps going in so basically I'm getting about four or five amps on a pretty cruddy day and the sun's about to go down over the hills anyway so that's good isn't it it also means that when my batteries are only at 65% charge this morning they're now at 77% charge and that's taking into account that the fridge has been running the radio has been on and the laptop's been on so for a winter's day we're not doing too bad coming up in next week's episode I plug in fuel up and say goodbye to my environmental credentials